I have over 100 houseplants and sometimes I get stressed out taking care of them. When I first started, I didn't even know what plants I was buying, much less how to take care of them. I'm sure you can relate. At this point, it's more of a quantity issue, but that's a self-imposed thing. I've been using the Blossom app to help out with my plant care and it's pretty cool because it's actually kind of comprehensive. It is so helpful and easy to use. I open the app, snap a couple pictures of the plant from different angles, and it identifies the plant. It'll give you a care card with all the basic information you need, including water, sun, soil, toxicity, and more. Go download it from the link in my bio and then follow for more plant stuff. Bye! One of the questions that I get the most is, I just got a Monstera. How do I get it to have fenestrations or the splits in the leaves? And why do Monsteras even have fenestrations? In the dense vegetation of the jungle, the competition for light is high. So the Monstera and other plant varieties do some things to make sure that they get the light they need. First is climb. The higher that they can get above that other vegetation makes them more competitive to get that sunlight. And as the plant matures, it gets bigger and bigger, which would naturally block the light of the plants underneath it. So the Monstera gets fenestrations to let light through to the plant underneath it. The fenestrations have an added function of protecting the plant from high wind speeds. It's springtime. This is the perfect time to get fenestrations. Just give it plenty of light and something to climb up and you'll have fenestrations in no time. Forget about all the fancy plant gadgets, here are the three things every plant parent should have. Extra all-purpose potting mix for repotting and replenishing. Neem oil for broad spectrum pest control and cleaning your plants. And a spray bottle, aka my favorite low-tech way to humidify. All right, plant people, let's talk about light. Indirect, direct, what does it even mean? First up, direct light. It looks like this and it's when the sunbeams directly hit your plants. Think the warm kind of sunbeams a cat would want to nap in. Then we have bright indirect, which is the most popular kind of houseplant light. Looks like this and is near a window, but there are no sunbeams. Seven to 10 feet from a window is where you'll find medium indirect light. Still a good amount of light, but definitely not as strong. And then we have medium low to low light. I usually categorize this as 20 plus feet away from a window, but still in a spot that you could comfortably read a book in. Low light can look like this, and it can also look like this. Most houseplants are killed by overwatering. This means they're watered too often rather than too much. So here's a video showing you when your plant actually needs to be watered. First up, take a bamboo chopstick, place it into the soil and swivel. You're looking to see how wet the chopstick is. Only moist soil will stick to the chopstick. So here you can see that only the bottom 25% or so is wet, meaning the top 75% of the soil is dry. This is ideal because most house plants like to dry out around 75% of the way between waterings. So I knew it was time to water. I bottom watered and 10 minutes later, I went back to check the soil. Ideally, I like to keep the top layer of soil dry to prevent fungus gnats. So this is great. The top 25% remains dry. This is what works for me. Find your way. Here's your friendly reminder that it's probably time to dust your plant leaves. This is super important because plants produce food using photosynthesis. And even the smallest layer of dust can block that sunlight. Here we're using a cleaning solution, but you can always just throw them right in the shower. I wanted to tell you guys the number one secret to plant care. A lot of new plant parents come to me asking for advice because their plant isn't happy. And if your plant's unhappy, the only thing I know for sure is that what you're doing now is not working. So try something different. Which brings me to my secret, don't be afraid to experiment. If you're currently letting your plant dry out between waterings, try watering it more. If your plant stays damp all the time, try letting it dry out. Is it in a shady corner? Move it closer to the window. Just keep trying new things until you figure out what makes your plant happy. I personally learned to care for plants by experimenting over the years. And if you're afraid that your plant will get worse while you're experimenting, you might need to start with an easier care plant that's a little more forgiving. And if you're looking for an easy care plant, start with the three amigos, a pothos, a zizi plant, or a snake plant. I'm always happy to help with plant questions, but you know your plant better than anybody. And the more you experiment, the more you'll learn. I know we try, and the days they 
go by Until we get home There's water in the flowers, let's grow People, they lie But hey, so do I Until it gets old Hi, my name's Caitlin, I own an online plant shop, and this is how to fix your not-so-thriving houseplants. Where the goody down they sir? More got one jay, I say something. Pony giga gum na sai. Yo say ni don't get you wang in Where the goody jammy yo so Ah Kiggo na do my changa jay. Tell me what I got to do. Good and then a Bluetooth car. Hey guys, my plant here rotted, so I want to show you how, what I'm going to do to save the plant. The first thing was just removing all the old leaves that are dying. You can see here the roots are like non-existent. They're all black and squishy. They've rotted away. I'm going to try and take a cutting low down on the plant, but if you look inside the stem here, you can see there's already rot spreading in there. I move up the stem. I'm going to cut an inch below the node. I'm going to remove that lowest leaf because it's going to die off anyway. And then I'm just placing that cutting directly into water and moving it over to my propagation station. Rot happens, plants die, but you can always save them if you know what to do. You guys have to do this when you bring a plant home from the nursery. The first thing I do is I take the plant out. I look at the roots as well as the soil to see if there's any rot and to see if they watered it. Next, I'll grab some alcohol as well as a cotton pad in my shears just in case I need to cut anything off. I'll take a look at the plant, cut off any leaves that just don't really look that good. Then I'll grab some tweezers and start pulling the little dead stuff away that's all tangled up in the stems. Then I grab my neem oil spray and I start spraying away. This part, you really want to drench the leaves as well as under the leaves and you can even use it as a soil drench. However, I'm just spraying it here to save for my other plants. I did the same thing with the ZZ plant. I was running out of solution, so I just ended up taking the lid off and pouring it in there. I did the same thing for my pothos, and that's pretty much it. You just have to quarantine your plants for a few weeks and make sure that they're not around any other plants. I'm a supersonic rocket ship. Nobody has to be held. Nobody needs to be out of sight. Nobody's gonna travel second class of the equality of no suppression of minorities. Ready to spice up your houseplant game? Here are four easy to care for plants that aren't snake plants or pothos. You all keep asking me, how? How is your pothos so freaking huge? And I'm gonna tell you. In nature, pothos love to climb. So if you want them to get big leaves and lots of vines, you have to allow them to climb like they do in nature. Pothos, when they get big, can even get fenestrations, kind of like a monstera. As you can see, they love to climb trees and latch on with aerial roots. And I'll show you what mine look like. Here you can see it's like a very thick vine and these little guys are all the aerial roots that have actually grabbed onto this pole. Vines have been attached with just like that wire that's on your loaf of bread. <laughs> you want temporary attachments that hold the vine to the post. Once they grab on with their aerial roots, you'll remove that temporary attachment and allow the plant to hold on on its own. That's it. So I watered my plants today and the spawn of Satan came out. So let's talk fungus nets. When combating these annoying creatures, it's a two-step process. Step number one is a neem oil drench. Now you can find neem oil at most garden centers or on Amazon. Now just spray the soil until it's absolutely drenched. This will kill any larvae. And also make sure you do read the directions on neem oil. Some of it's pre-mixed and some of it you will need to mix yourself. And when you spray the soil, some of the adult gnats are going to fly off, and that's where these yellow sticky traps come in handy. And guess what? The little dipshit gnats are attracted to yellow, so when they come back, they'll fly right into the sticky traps. And the sticky traps come from, where do you think? Amazon. 
Repeat the neem oil drench again in a few days because there's probably eggs in the soil and when they hatch, you're gonna have a whole new generation of larvae to slaughter. Follow for more crazy plant videos.